virtual meeting, May 26, 2020. The time is 1.37 p.m. And the first item on the agenda is for Mrs. Daly to take roll call. Good afternoon. Mr. Raymond Daniels. Present. Mr. Daryl Love. Present. Ms. Christy Morris. Present. Mr. Tyler Murphy. Present. Ms. Stephanie Spires. Present. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Daly. I'd like to begin by welcoming everyone who is tuned in to watch today's virtual meeting. I know we have a lot going on. I actually just noticed in the background, I have balloons from kindergarten graduation because a couple teachers stopped by and dropped these off today. Um, so I have a proud graduate in the house. Um, and I know that our teachers and our administration are, are really busy. And so I appreciate everyone that's tuned in and watching right now. Um, we'll start the meeting by reading our mission statement by Mr. Tyler Murphy. Give me one second. I had it pulled up and then it went away. No problem. Here it is. Our mission is to create a collaborative community that ensures all students achieve at high levels and graduate prepared to excel in a global society. Thank you, Mr. Murphy. Next, I'll read the purpose of today's meeting. Pursuant to KRS Chapter 61, notice is hereby given that on May 22nd, 2020, the chair of the Fayette County Board of Education called a special meeting of the Board of Education for Tuesday, May 26, 2020 at 1.30 p.m. The Fayette County Public Schools Board of Education will conduct a virtual meeting on Tuesday, May 26, 2020 at 1.30 p.m. This will be a virtual meeting streamed online for the purpose of board consideration and approval of the vendor for the online summer learning platform 2020-21 tentative budget and 2020-21 salary schedules. The link for the meeting is fpcs.net slash virtual meeting. Please be advised in the state of a proclaimed national emergency and under a similar declaration by the governor, it is not currently feasible for the board to provide meeting room conditions in the face of COVID-19, a highly contagious virus that spreads between people who are in close contact with one another within about six feet. Under these exceptional circumstances in which the Commonwealth of Kentucky is confronting a worldwide pandemic while nevertheless needing to accomplish critical public business pursuant to KRS 61.840, the Fayette County Public Schools Board of Education will not provide a primary physical location for public viewing and will proceed pursuant to KRS 61.826 with concessions outlined in the Attorney General's opinion OAG 20-05. Thus, the public can access the media via the live stream, but cannot be physically present at the meeting. And at this time, I'll turn the meeting over to Fayette County Public Schools Superintendent, Manny Cock. All right, thank you, Madam Chair. Let me I would also like to welcome any members of the public who are joining us uh, this afternoon for our virtual meeting. Our first order of business this afternoon is to ask the board to approve a contract for our summer learning platform. You will recall that at our regular meeting last week, we heard from Title I coordinator, uh, Mindy Mills, about an online learning platform that provides adaptive, one-to-one -one intensive instruction and scaffolded supports in both literacy and mathematics for all learners in grades of pre-K through eighth, including our English learners, our struggling students, our students with special needs, and our gifted students as well. Mindy is with us again this afternoon if any of our board members have any additional questions. I just wanted to jump in and say I've talked to several um, elementary teachers in the past week, it's the advantage of having four in elementary school, and they are all excited that this is the curriculum that is being presented and that this is the opportunity that we're giving for all our students this summer. Um, and so the feedback has been really positive. I've also had really great feedback about this program, so I'm excited. Um, I think they had used it at school, but we hadn't used it at home yet, but several teachers um, told me that they really loved it, and so, and some parents, so it's exciting. So if there's no further discussion, I, oh. I have a question. Um, so I just want to know, and uh, I know we talked a little bit about this just uh, briefly, about this particular program and the Power Scholars program that we have had with the Y. Um, and I understand we're going to go with this program. Um, 
uh, Ms. Mills, as we talked about this summer, but what do we think in terms of our engagement going forward with um, the YMCA and the uh, Power Scholars Program? Well, I think at this point, let's realize that this platform that we're asking for you all to approve today is for our summer bridge for this summer, but then we also have this platform for the entire next school year, whether our kids are in school or whether we have to have extended closures again. I understand. Um, I don't see any reason why if things were to get back to normal per se, whatever that might be, the following summer, we would not want to continue our partnership with the YMCA and the Power Scholars Academy. It's just been difficult this summer because um, you know, we're not able to have students in our buildings. And that program really is only gonna work best if it's face-to-face. -face. Um, so I think, um, Mindy, I think that the, the underlying question and if i may board member love is um are, will the y provide any summer learning in partnership with us this summer or because of the pandemic and the um the fact that we can't do face-to-face -face instruction um that is a, is a y going to offer um, a program in partnership with us this summer or not are we still exploring it um i guess the answer would really be Probably no. Yeah. The YMCA is helping us with some of the incentives for the Summer Bridge program through some of the funding that they had originally received for Power Scholars if their donors were willing to do that. They are also pursuing to try to continue to do Power Scholars on their own later in the summer if things open up enough that they could do that at their sites. Okay. Yeah, and I think it's both looking about the immediate as well as the long term. Yeah, because I think, and I look again, being a part of that program as we kind of brought that online and continue to grow it, you just kind of hate to see it kind of fizzle out. Now, I understand with the situation of innovation, we kind of think about, and I understand this tool right here is just something to put in our tool belt to have not only advantage for our students during the summer, but also they'll have um, the opportunity to use the school if we find ourselves in another extended out of the classroom type of experience there as well. But I think we all agree there's nothing like that one-to-one -one when you're in a classroom setting with, with students and that interaction that kind of takes place. I, I'll just add on um, that this tool, again, it's about um, being innovative in this time and space. Sure. So in a time and space where we can't, um, it's not um, because of the uh, pandemic and the health considerations and wanting to keep everyone healthy in and, and order to adhere to the, the guidelines espoused by the CDC, by the state health department and local health department. This is an innovative approach to providing uh, summer bridge and, and, and summer learning for students um, uh, in a remote way and virtually. And so, you know, that's why we're moving to this platform at this time. Ideally, we would have our summer learning and more in partnership with the Y and other partners give students a robust experience that goes beyond just the literacy and numeracy, but also includes the arts, et cetera, um, which has become part of Fayette County's signature summer program in partnership with the Y. But um, due to the current circumstances, um, obviously um, we had to be innovative, creative in a way that can engage students and reduce stress for families. We understand stress and I'm, I'm one of the parents that we're all under uh, with students in school and uh, try to um, reduce that summer slide um, that happens. So. so here's another follow-up question. And, and I don't have any problems with the, with, the, with the actual module and the actual product itself. So this is really around implementation, utilization, and adoption, right? Mm -hmm. So what have we learned? I mean, and one of the things that I have heard, especially for some of our struggling families, families of poverty, of course, is when you've got a home where you've got maybe two parents, they're there, they're kind of working through versus someone who's outside the home, somebody else who's doing alternative daycare and sitting for a parent. Um, some of the challenges that some of these particular families face, and we saw this right now in terms of our current environment. As we exit out of this, we go to the summer, how are we going to really monitor to make sure that, you know, of course, if a student is signed up to take those particular classes, there is the extra support that's gonna be getting given to that particular student, helping those particular families. And if we notice that something Let's say, for example, if a student has signed up, they're not engaging, what are we going to be doing to kind of help that? Because I think we'll all realize that 
a lot of students have lost a lot of learning over the last couple of weeks and we're utilizing the summer as our catch up period. So I just want to make sure that we're trying to do all that we can to make sure that, again, we're mitigating that why, I mean, you're going to have some, you're going to have some slippage, but how can we mitigate that to make sure that we're still providing that learning opportunity for our students? Okay, so I think that um, the way we're doing that is every school is identifying what we're calling their targeted or focused students. And those are the students that are basically below the 40th percentile or thereabouts in reading and math. They will be assigned to teachers for the Summer Bridge Program. So those teachers will have their group of students that they will contact and reach out to. We've got a sample. Um, Right now, it's kind of a sample daily schedule. So if um, Ms. Johns is one of our teachers, she may log on to her Google Classroom at nine o'clock in the morning and do a 20 minute live session with her students. That's gonna be recorded so that if a student couldn't get on at that time, they got on later in the day, but that's her group of kids that she will be encouraging and contacting and trying to motivate to continue to participate for that time during the summer. Um, so those focus kids, which I think you are really referring to, will have contacts with a teacher throughout the Summer Bridge program. But the platform itself will be available to every student in Fayette County, pre-K through eight. But every student won't have necessarily a teacher contact. Understood. They just have that. And then the teacher for those focus kids will be able to monitor their data, look at how often they're getting on, how many lessons they've completed, and reach out to them to um, encourage them to continue to participate. And they are receiving a stipend for their time for that time throughout the summer, either through Title I, ESS funds. Right now we have 100% participation with all elementary schools that are identifying focus kids with teachers to be their support throughout the summer. And um, we're almost there with our middle schools with 100% participation. And we're also gonna have FACE it to engage families as well. Yes. I was going to say, I, I'm a, I have a kid that is a focus kid, and I've already been contacted by um, the person who is going to be her teacher this summer, and she's already given us the information and, and, you know, like made that contact. And I assume that that's pretty typical. She wanted to make sure we had that contact before school was out, that I had her cell phone number, that I had what I needed, that we had the materials we needed, and that we were ready to go. So That's awesome. Yeah, and that was our goal, was to try to get – Everything laid out as much in place by the end of this week that we possibly could, honestly, so our teachers could take a break. We know that even though their contract is till June 11th, most of them have already worked all those flex hours that they need, you know, and so that they can take a break and come back and be ready to start Summer Bridge um, on June 22nd. Um, and, also, uh, and keep in mind, our teachers are also, some of them are parents as well. And so right. they have children, you know, they're caring for and working. Uh, obviously with with our children um in, in their official capacity so we definitely want to make sure that uh, they get a little respite get a chance to re-energize um and we're greatly appreciative for those teachers who are taking on uh, this assignment to help um, get students caught up prevent further slide you know etc these are extraordinary times and um it calls for extraordinary efforts and so we're grateful for our teachers for stepping up hey man while, while we're on the subject i'm sorry board member murphy while we're on the subject uh, this does cover a lot of what we think as board member love says some of the folks we think we have deficits in the final semester of school yes it covers some of the high risk folks what are we doing for eighth graders going to ninth grade next year having stated that there is a deficit in their final semester of learning in eighth grade in entering an unknown, uncharted world. We've hit the other transition from elementary to middle. What are you doing? Are we doing anything specifically or making anything available specifically for eighth graders going to ninth grade? This is, I mean, they could certainly, those students identify could use this platform. In the past, we had our bridge. So that, that was my question. So if I'm in eighth grade and I'm identified, but I'm going to ninth grade last year, I can use this platform? Yes. That's correct. And okay, actually, we have, we have asked our middle schools to keep their eighth graders throughout the summer for this platform. Because okay, that's, that's, that's what I wanted to clear. Thank you. Thank you. So even though it might be a middle school teacher, they would still have contact throughout the summer to work on this. 
A couple more things to add in as well. Uh, superintendent mentioned the face with parent with family and parent engagement. We are also going to have a supplement with some EL teachers. Schools with their focus students are going to be identifying specific students that need additional support from an EL teacher. So that's going to be part of the summer bridge. And we're also going to have district mental health specialists on call so that they can um, be on call for any teacher to reach out to them. So all of our summer bridge teachers will know who they are and they can reach out to them to say, hey, I've got a big concern with this student. Can you please help me check on them or whatever needs to happen with that support throughout the summer? And then our um, oh, no. high schools also have Odyssey Wear that they had already purchased, which is another platform that high school students can be on to credit recovery and different things throughout the summer. Well, and it's also important to note, too, that this is not just uh, a summer program, right? It's, su it's supplementing uh, what we're doing <clears throat> in the summer and, and with the uh, addressing the, the bridge program and the gaps. But it's also going to be a tool uh, that can supplement instruction uh, next school year, but whether it's in a virtual setting or it's in the classroom or what have you. It may be the primary driver uh, of addressing these gaps this summer, but it's going to play a supplemental role next school year that's correct and, and that's that correct. summer data will be there to inform instruction in the fall to, to board member love's point and help identify and address some of those gaps that students are going to come into the next school year with that's correct and because of the adaptability how adaptive it is it, it can pinpoint exactly where you're at you know um strengths weaknesses and create the learning platform that's tailored to you as a student and then because of your unique ID it stays with you throughout the year so you can teachers can go in and you're right it's going to play a primary role but then a secondary role once we um, start the new academic year so you know one of the things that I would say is that we're making this investment and talking about rolling it out is the communication for it um, and I think it's important not only for parents to understand that this is a tool that we're using a, for such a time as this but through maybe our social media, just to make people aware that this is out there. I mean, for usage. I mean, there's some very, very good points, uh, Superintendent, that you just made, many has made as well, uh, regarding how it can really help families at a self pace, right? So yeah. we, we have some of those students that we're targeting, but we do realize that given where we ended the school year, that there's some additional supports that's gonna be needed. And I think it's important not only for our families, but our community, to know that we're making that type of investment in tools like this to be able to help families. And it's out there free. So when you talk about the use of your tax dollars and then investment around how it helps to drive education, I think we shouldn't miss out on the point to really help promote this. I, I, think, I think that once our uh, senior sends off is over this week and our communication team <laughs> finished with that, that, you will see the big, huge blast for Summer Bridge. Uh, coming we're already working on it just gotta tread the waters of what has to be done first Ray yes. says he'll stand out on Main Street with a sandwich board promoting it <laughs> <laughs> <Just> <laughs> I'll bring you some more anything that, you know but uh it, it's right. a you know again it's about being innovative and creative in this time and space agree all right well if there is no further discussion a motion is to purchase Imagine Learning as an online learning platform for literacy and mathematics for the 2020-21 school year. I'll make a motion to order to purchase Imagine Learning as an online learning platform for literacy and mathematics for the 2021 school year. Thank you, Ms. Morris. So I have a second. I'll second. Second by Mr. Murphy. Any further questions or discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Motion passes 5-0. All right. Thank you, board. Thank you, Mindy. The next item for your consideration is the adoption of the 2020-2021 uh, tentative budget. Over the past several weeks, you've heard from multiple members of the district leadership team. You heard from school leaders about the important items this budget will provide for in support of our district strategic plan. At this time, I'd like to ask our budget director, Julianne Mullins, and Chief Financial Officer, John White, to give a brief recap of our proposed budget. Good 
afternoon, Board and uh, Superintendent Calk and others that are joining us that may have not have seen this presentation before. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, today's agenda, as uh, we just discussed, approval of the vendor of the online summer learning, which you just talked about, approved. Thank you. A recap of the approval and approval of the tentative budget for FY21 or the the year of 2020-2021, as well as approval for the salary schedules for the same year. Next slide, please. Uh, the timeline, you've seen this at least three other times, but for those who may be joining us today who haven't seen this, on May 7th, we presented various uh, multiple presentations on our imperative of excellent supports. May 14th, uh, we continue with excellent supports as well as uh, introduce the imperatives of excellent staff, excellent school and student opportunities. And the 18th, uh, we reviewed with you uh, continued excellent relationships as well as projected revenues and expenses, as well as the salary schedules for FY21. Next slide, please. Uh, today, special call meeting to review some budget uh, things that we've already discussed, as well as finalize the tentative budget and the salary schedules for next year. Mid-August, as you well know, is when we receive our property assessments and the proposed tax rates. And from that point, when we, whenever that is, we have 45 days from receiving the certification from the Kentucky Department of Revenue to uh, approve and adopt uh, rates for FY21. Next slide, please. Mid-August, fund balance processes are finalized as well as staffing allocations are adjusted. And in September, we will come back to discuss and present a final working budget for FY21 and ask the board to adopt and set rates for FY21, of which September 30 is our deadline for submitting that approved working budget, final working budget to Kentucky Department of Education. Next slide. And I will turn it over to my colleague, Julaine Mullins, to discuss the tentative budget. Good afternoon. We just wanted to give a brief overcap of our budget. And one of the things that I wanted to print, uh, point out that since our budget is over 80% uh, salaries, we wanted to provide a breakdown on how we spend those salary dollars. So approximately 91% uh, of those dollars are in the classroom or in supporting students and the other 9% is our district operational supports. Uh, with the, next slide. With the uh, COVID pandemic, uh, the federal government has uh, provided districts and states with uh, CARES Act federal funds, and the district is going to be able to receive two type, two pots of money. One is the GEARS dollars. Um, we received about $30 million statewide. Uh, the district's allocation will be approximately $1.1 million, uh, $1 million. And the ESSER dollars, uh, we received a, approximately $194 million statewide and the district's allocation will be $11.1 .1 million. And we have through September of 2022 to spend those funds. Next slide. Those funds were awarded to districts through the Title I formula. And uh, we have already submitted those assurances back to KDE and they've already been approved. Uh, we also have to provide a spending plan in our GMAP system by June 30th. So we will obviously be working on a spending plan for those funds over the next couple of weeks. And we will be requesting reimbursement for those dollars, the same as any other federal grant uh, using the process of our federal crash, uh, cash request process. Next slide, please. Uh, we have provided, uh, been provided some um, guidance and they are um, asking district or recommending districts on the GEARS dollars to use those funds for 
digital learning and to expand the remote uh, food services to students. Also on the ESSER funds, they have recently within the last day or two provided some guidance and we are going to have some flexibility uh, on how those dollars are spent. Um, but again, um, we they are to be used to overcome the barriers that districts have incurred due to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic here in the district. Next slide. Our general fund budget um, this year for our new program, we are uh, starting a, a K-8 STEM program that will begin in the fall. And the cost of that program is roughly $1.9 million. And we have broke down those costs off to the side so you could see what went into those, um, how we came about including those numbers. We are also, uh, we have our um, STEAM building uh, academy that's uh, currently in the O. Johnson building. Uh, their new facility will be uh, ready this fall. Uh, so we are helping with some, uh, they received a lot of donations from their community partners. But uh, again, we are having to uh, put some general fund support in there to make sure they have a state of an art science lab. We are also got some exciting partnerships going on with some of our uh, programs. Locust Trace has partnered with KTLA and we are providing our part of the partnership is we are going to provide a, a 0.5 um, equine teacher, an ag teacher for the upcoming school year to help support that program. And also our KISTA debt service payments, which is our, our bond payments for our school buses. All of that is funded in the general fund. So uh, this year on our bond uh, schedule, it has went up approximately $168,000. That fluctuates from year to year. We are in expecting approximately a 10% increase in our, on our fleet insurance this year, our, our property insurance. And our fleet insurance, we're in, in, uh, seeing an increase in that because of the uh, changes in vehicles that we're adding to the policy, like we, we replace our uh, buses and uh, do some other type of routine uh, maintenance and uh, replacement cycle each year. Also, we are seeing a uh, increase related to our 504 needs among our students. So we are asking the board to uh, consider increasing uh, that budget for the upcoming school year by about approximately $20,000. We are also um, needing to put portables in place to relieve some overcrowding at Wimburn and uh, Jesse Clark for the upcoming school year. We are seeing some changes in our transportation um, with our routes with student more student ridership as well as the implementation of our a new STEM program. We are also seeing some slight increase in our utilities and that is due to uh, the opening of our STEM program as well as uh, the procurement of our Park Place facility. And again, I left it on there, but I wanted to make sure that, the, uh, that we just reiterated that back in January, we were expected to see a $1.3 million increase in our CER rates, which is our uh, classified retirement system employer match. And uh, the rates had already been approved for the upcoming school year, but we received a memo a couple weeks ago where uh, the retirement systems board, um, they voted to keep those rates flat for the upcoming school year to support districts and, and counties and as well as health departments for the upcoming school year to try to help uh, ease the burden of the, the pandemic. So we're just very appreciative and I, I just wanted to make sure that we put that out there. We also have built into our budget our normal one and a half percent step increase for experience and that is due to our uh, employees moving uh, up on the 
teach on the salary schedules related to the years of experience that they have in place. That brings our total uh, recurring expenses to approximately $6.4 million. If you look at our revenue um, streams for the upcoming school year, uh, we did not build our budget predicated on the 4% as we have normally done in the past. We looked at the revenue that we had received above budget this year. Um, as you all are, are well aware, we have somewhere between a 96 and a 98 or 99% collection rate at any given year. And I normally budget at the 96% rate. Uh, we do this to help make sure that there's a slight cushion in case there's other revenue streams that do not make budget for that particular year. So currently, we have approximately $4 million of recurring revenue that we have received for this year that has not been budgeted out. And looking at historical analysis uh, between the compensating rate and the 4% rate, we believe that keeping the rate flat as is, we would still gener uh, generate approximately $3 million. So uh, we will know more in, um, as we get those uh, um, tax rates and assessments later on in the summer. It looks like they're gonna be delivered to us, as John alluded, a little later than what we normally receive them. But we'll know more then but at this point in time, this is our, our, best project, uh, our best projection of those revenue streams for the upcoming school year. Also, uh, we are looking at a decline in interest rates uh, for the upcoming school year. So we're gonna reduce that uh, projection down by approximately a million dollars. We are looking at a huge uh, projected decline in our occupational license tax which is our payroll tax. Uh, and that is due predominantly with the economy shutting down due to the COVID-19. We're, we're hoping that as more businesses open up that our economy will jump up back again. But we actually have been working with several different um, uh, districts across the state as well as looking at our local uh, government to see the process that they were using. And we have decided that we were um, going to follow the guidance um, or the methodology that was being used at the city level. Again, we will keep those revenue streams. We will be monitoring those almost daily, I'm assuming at this point in time and, and make adjustments to those throughout the year as needed. Again, uh, we went through a very uh, a, a, a very fragile year in our General Assembly again, and uh, the final budget came out very different than what the versions that we had seen come out of the House and the Senate. But with COVID, uh, they gave a very conservative budget for the upcoming school year at the state level. And with that, they held our uh, seat dollars flat. And with that being said, as our assessment as our assessments go up and our uh, guaranteed stays flat, it increases our general our local effort uh, contribution. So we are expecting a uh, approximately one point uh, two point seven million dollar uh, decline there. We need to go ahead and, and uh, plan for that. We do expect to have mid-year state reductions that normally come down around Christmas time or right after the first of the year due to uh, the revenues not being uh, over projected revenues at the state level. So we are expecting those to happen. So um, we do need to plan for that moving forward. Um, as you've seen in, in previous years, we also have some, some flexibility where there are flex focus dollars that we've received from the state and we're asking approximately $500,000 of those dollars be put toward our uh, recurring expenses for the upcoming school year. 
uh, our federal dollars the that uh, were provided through the CARES Act. We are asking that we spend or at least allocated approximately 60% of those dollars for the uh, upcoming school year and still have uh, an allocation for the 22 uh, school year to be able to uh, support our general fund budget if needed, if we're uh, to shore up any uh, revenue shortfalls that do not rebound once the economy gets moving again. We also uh, re-looked our existing budget this year when we were going through our budget process and we decided to temporarily suspend the pay crew for the 2021 school year. We did another reduction at here at IKSS of operating expenses and uh, that freed up approximately $560,000. Uh, Harrison, one of our uh, elementary, one of our Promise Academies, they have restructured their instructional day for the upcoming school year. So we're going to realize about $100,000 uh, that could be reallocated through um, those efforts and as well as our dual credit account. Uh, the board put some uh, additional dollars in there a few years ago uh, and we just want to trim that back a little bit until we see the growth in those programs uh, continue to expand. So with that being said, our, uh, dollars, our new dollars to support our general fund, our, our budget package for the upcoming school year is $6.9 million. Are there any questions thus far? Okay, next slide, please. We do have some one-time items uh, that we would like you to consider also. We have an opportunity to capture um, some additional dollars to help with some of our uh, technology uh, projects. Um, Bob could explain it better, but we have the uh, flexibility to be able to uh, realize an additional $4 million for technology-related infrastructure projects for a, a small, considerably small match. So we are asking for some one-time dollars to be put toward that project this year. And uh, Mindy had already, uh, um, the board has already approved the uh, summer learning uh, project to uh, platform for the upcoming school year. And uh, we will be deciding the best use of our eligible funding to make sure that we are strategically uh, spending all of our dollars to maximize our uh, general fund efforts moving forward. Next slide. We have, in addition to the general fund, we have uh, special revenue, which is our grants, food service, which up, uh, in the past has been self uh, support, supporting, and we have capital outlay in our building fund, which are used to spend, uh, to support our debt service as well as capital projects. Uh, this brings our total general fund package up to $686 million, uh, million $543,368. And at this time, I'll take any questions you might have related to our budget package for the upcoming school year. Okay. Well, if there's not any questions before, um, we move on to our salary schedule. I just wanted to, we had, um, we had the, um, each department to give a presentation to the board this year uh, related to how they utilize the dollars of the district. And we in the budget office have made up a booklet for our board members. It encompasses our district budget document that you already have in your possession in the PowerPoint presentations that were provided, along with a summary of not only our departments, 
but the dollars they are, are being spent at the school level. I think it will be a very useful tool for you all to have in your possession as you're talking to your constituents um, this year regarding your budget. And we're going to, I'm so sorry, we didn't even get those these back from the printer until today, but we will be placing those in the mail to you guys so you all should receive them this week. All right, at this time, if there's no further discussion, I will ask for a motion to approve the 2020-21, um, excuse me, I'll ask in order to approve the Fayette County Public Schools 2020-2021 tentative budget and instruct the superintendent to submit the tentative budget to the Kentucky Department of Education. Madam Chair, I move that we um, accept the tentative budget and as presented and instruct the superintendent to submit the tentative budget to the Kentucky Department of Transportation, Kentucky Department of Education, sorry. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Thank you. I second that, Madam Chair. Second by Mr. First, a motion by Mr. Love, a second by Mr. Daniels. Any further discussion or questions? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 5-0. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Board. Uh, next, we'll move on to the 2020-2021 uh, salary schedule recommendation. Uh, i turn it over to Jelaine uh, to continue presentation. Absolutely. Uh, we have provided a, a copy of our salary schedule and markup form. Uh, these scalar, uh, salary schedules, very few changes for the upcoming school year. Uh, no salary increase, but we will see our employees move up on the salary schedule. Um, there are uh, just a few changes related on page two of the salary schedule. Uh, there are, is some language uh, related to uh, how um, we will move up on the salary, uh, employees move up on the salary schedule based on their education level, particularly when we do like a plus 15 uh, type language. It's just clarifying language. Uh, we also, um, since we are restructuring our some of our, our Harrison Promise Academy, we updated the language to uh, support those changes. Um, we also included an $800 supplemental stipend for our dance team. Um, they have, a, I guess, a committee an athletic uh, committee here that, that meets uh, quarterly or monthly, and they felt like they had enough participation to make sure that they weren't, that they had uh, representation on that committee at the district level. Uh, also there on page 24, there is clarifying language for, related to classified five pay for transferring experience and increases for educational experience. Are there any questions uh, related uh, to any of our salary schedules or proposed changes for the upcoming school year? Uh, yes, Jelaine, I, I've gotten some inquiries about the changes to the classified um, schedule, because I know that I asked last time with these changes, um, like retroactively applied to current employees but I, there seems to be a concern among current classified hourly employees that there's almost a penalty if there's a if they given the this language that we've been presented that there's a penalty a penalty if they uh, transition to a salary position. So even though it may be a, for lack of a better term, a promotion, it may require more certifications if they've been in a uh, classified hourly position. A certain length of time at a certain grade level uh, getting additional certifications and then we hire someone within the district and they take a salary position that could actually result in a reduction of pay can you can you speak to that is that is that a consequence of some of this language here i'm going to let miss dyer respond to that okay yeah um let me first of all clarify that there is no structural change um in revisions this is the way it has been done, but because um, 
as we move forward and as we work with our employees, sometimes there are things because of our continuous improvement process that we want to clarify. There has been confusion of the interpretation around this, which is why we have put in the clarifying language. What you're referring to, um, Board Member Murphy, is there are in the hourly section of the classified hourly salary schedule, there are some certifications. Those are teacher certifications. These are things like um, a plumbing license in our operations, um, our electricians, they have electrician license, law enforcement, there are extra certifications above and beyond the minimum requirements that you can get and they count towards a step. A step on the hourly salary schedule is not equivalent to a level on the salaried schedule because that is a year's worth of experience. That's beyond someone's whether you have a master's, whether you have a rank one, where you have a rank two, whether you have, that's how you get that on the salaried schedule with education. These aren't college certificates. They are licensures that have to do with your current job. Um, in our technology department, there are several. Like if you look on that list in the back, there are several different ones for um, security, uh, cyber security. You can go online, you can take courses. In our, cl our um, clerical areas, administrative assistance, they can go get Microsoft Office certified. That will count towards one level, one step. But again, a step on the hourly side is not worth a years of experience that is equivalent on the uh, salary schedule. And so those apply for those hourly positions. When someone takes a salaried position, that is a whole different um, way of setting people up and that's in statute based on your ex education and your experience level. There have been some employees that said, yes, if I took this two week course and got a certificate that you should give me a full year's worth of experience over here on the salary schedule that it took a teacher a full year. Teacher could not go online and take a certificate. They would have to become certified like national board certified or something like that to see that increase for those type of certifications to be applicable to the salary schedule. So that those type of certificates that are allowed on the hourly schedule are not comparable to a step on the salary schedule that is a year's worth of experience. Um, there are other methods. Again, um, when someone moves over, we look at their educational level, whether they follow the bachelor's, the master's, master's plus 15, all of those things. So there is no language changing the structure. It is just making it more clear. So when someone reads this, um, if they're looking at changing, it makes it more clear to them if they didn't ask um, specific questions. We're hoping that this language helps clarify that from the beginning. So they still get to bring over all their years if it's applicable. Um, but in regs, what counts for a certified teacher, you can't say that a paraeducator, their experience as a para is going to count as experience as a teacher because in regs, that's just not allowed. Mm -hmm. does yeah. That, yeah. Does that make so sense? It, that was my, so my, my biggest question and again this is something we harped on where we talked about last time i just want to make clear that whatever the action that we're taking today is, is not adversely affecting current employees even if there have been situations where um perhaps it's been the result of a miscommunication or some someone was put into one grade and it wasn't uh um, calculated correctly or there was a an entry error or something on the part of payroll. I, I just want to make sure that we're not adversely impacting one current employees, and then two, we're not dis we're not disadvantaging uh, our classified departments. We're not putting them in a competitive disadvantage, right? So if if someone is given the tools and the flexibility to kind of be hired from within and grow our own, I just want to make sure that supports are in place. Absolutely. And again, none of this language is making any changes to the current practices. It's just clarifying it. So when someone reads that, it doesn't lead to interpretation. It leads to further explanation. Okay. And, 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 you know, maybe this is something just, especially for those employees who need to 
uh, who are transferring from hourly to salary positions or classified employees. Uh, we just make sure that the communication during that transition and, and the recruitment process is, is clear so that they kind of understand the consequences of that. I uh, appreciate that. And yes, and we, we have um, reflected and made some of those changes so that we are now making sure that some of that salary is um, discussed up front. Um, oftentimes that's done after they've accepted an offer. Um, so now we have changed some of those practices. So I appreciate that input and anything else, but yeah, we will continue to look and make sure we're as clear as possible. Thank you. Are there any more questions? Any more questions? If there are no additional questions for the staff at this time, I will entertain a motion. Um, I'll ask for a motion to approve the 2020-2021 salary schedules as presented for the following. Teacher salary schedule, occupational therapist, physical therapist, law enforcement lieutenant salary schedule, family resource and youth service center coordinator salary schedule, and classified hourly employees single salary schedule, certified salary schedule index, supplemental salary schedule for academics, supplemental salary schedule for athletics, administrative additive schedule for administrative and supervisory personnel, substitute teacher salary schedule, and student worker workers salary schedule. Madam Chair, I'll make a motion to approve all salary schedules as presented and listed. Thank you, Mr. Daniels. I have a motion by Mr. Daniels. Do I have a second? I'll second. A second by Mrs. Morris. Is there any further questions or discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes 5-0. At this time, I will entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting of the Fayette County Public um, Board of Education. I move to adjourn, Madam Chair. Second. Have a motion by Mr. Murphy. I think the second was by Mr. Love. Yes. yes. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 5 0, and we are adjourned. Thank you, board. Thank Goodbye, you. all. Have Thank a good you. Day.